It's, it's, a very, it's a very difficult time for the state. Many of you who have been in the university system have seen tuition increases and increases in, in, uh, uh, and cuts in, in, in the schools, and we need to change that. We need to once again invest in, in our higher education. When I served in the legislature uh, in the 80s, I served on the Appropriations Committee, and we were able to put $100 million of new money into the university system. Now, we won't be able to do that. We always, obviously won't be able to do that in the short term, but it's a matter of priorities and spending and revenues. I know from my experience as, as a budgeting person in, in state government and as a small business owner that revenues change in Maine, and they go up and they go down. And for the first time in one complete uh, eight-year term of a governor, there's never been an increase in revenues, and there's a reason for that. Number one, the economy has been down, but number two, we have a tax system that's based on the 1960s. And I mean, what, what do I mean by that? We designed a tax system on a 60s model. We used to uh, depend on about $200 million worth of revenues from tobacco. We wanted people to smoke. Light up. We need the money. <laughs> But the fact is, is that we don't encourage that anymore. We want people to quit smoking. We have the lowest smoking start in teenagers in the United States of America today. So we've been successful in getting people to quit smoking and to stop children from smoking, but that line item that we depended on is half of what it used to be. So what do we do about that? We need to change that. For the first time, uh, the state of Maine has broadened the sales tax, and they've allowed for new forms of revenue to come in to the sales tax system. What did it mean to the people of Maine, to families of Maine? It meant a net, I mean, a net loss to every family in the state of Maine of $300 less taxes paid. That was independent analysis that was done. Now, there are revenues coming from other people, from some non-residents and some tourists and some other folks, but those revenues will help increase the revenues in state government. As I mentioned to you, I ran several small businesses uh, in the state of Maine, and one was a motel, and I ran that business for 20 years, and it was interesting that, that everyone that walked through that door, we'd always ask them how their trip was, how their day was going, were they having a good experience in the state of Maine, but we never had one person walk out the door and say, I'm never coming back here because I don't want to pay that 5% meals and lodging tax in the state of Maine, or that 7% meals and lodging tax in the state of Maine. They always said they would come back because it's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful place to come, and it's a beautiful place to have a vacation. Can you imagine paying 21% uh, lodging tax in the District of Columbia, or 18% in New York City? People do it. They do it every day, they do business, they do vacations. Now, I'm not advocating that we do that, but what I'm saying is there are other opportunities for the state of Maine to look at revenues that I know about from being a, a part of this economy and, and to help small businesses access capital and new markets. That was part of my job when I worked in the Clinton administration. Remember the Clinton administration that had 20 million new jobs created in that eight-year period. Now, it wasn't Bill Clinton, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't him by himself, but it was a lot of things that were happening. The economy, the, the cycles of the economy, but we were offering new opportunities for small businesses. The small businesses are the engines of the American economy, and I know that because I've owned one, and I know that, that main businesses need help. They need access to capital. The banks have frozen capital for many, many uh, months now, as this recession started, uh, we've seen capital freeze up. And I can, and I can help businesses access capital. From being a, a, an operator of, of, of the Small Business Administration in New England, the manager of that entity, and also as being a member of the Finance Authority of Maine Board of Directors that has helped <coughs> hundreds of businesses across the state of Maine. We need to make an effort to show these businesses that we care about them and that we want them to succeed. So I offer that as a candidate for governor. And I also offer my education experience. And we talked about that at dinner, about what, what I did at Farmington. And I, I basically did what Mr. Sear did. See him standing behind that camera up there? That's what I used to do when I attended, attended school here. And I, and, we, and I would show the movie. How many people used to go to the movies here at the University of Maine at Farmington? Anybody in the room? And so if you ever had a reel that went off and spinning and, and the movie stopped and the, and the lights were out, it was probably me sleeping in the projection booth. 
So, but the fact of the matter is that's, that's what I did when I was here at Farmington, and I was on a ski team here. I was on a ski team uh, uh, with Coach Tom Reynolds, who uh, uh, we had a, uh, a NAIA championship team that year. It was one of the best ski teams in New England. Uh, our captain was a guy named Rick Hardy. Many of you know him. He's the uh, um, uh, local ski coach here. He's had several championships. So uh, my roots are in Maine. I was born in Maine. I will spend the rest of my life in Maine. And, and I think that's interesting. If, if you look around the candidates that are running for governor, you'll see a lot of folks don't have ties to Maine, but they want to be governor. And, and I think that's important that you ask them about that, about, about coming to Maine and seeing it differently. I see it as a changed place, as a place where we can become energy independent in less than a decade. How do we do that? We change the way we're using energy in the state of Maine. Uh, from the time I was first elected to the legislature, I've been involved in energy and environmental and conservation issues. I mentioned the Land for Maine's Future Bill that I sponsored. It's about 700,000 acres today that have been put into permanent conservation. It's a program that the people of this state love, and it's a program that, that I have a lot of help from, a lot of people in the legislature and around the state. It regularly, regularly achieves about 65% of the vote from the people of Maine. They want land set aside for themselves and for their children to go hiking, skiing, biking, canoeing, and fishing and hunting, and, and all of those things that we love to do in Maine. I, I, I just left uh, probably the best job in the state of Maine. And uh, I've been asked over and over again about getting a psychological evaluation of why I would leave the Department of Conservation, the best job in Maine, and go and run for governor. And when I, when I was appointed uh, conservation commissioner, I had an objective to put more land in conservation, change the way we, we host about 2 million visitors in the state parks every year. Um, it's a big part of the main economy. When people arrive at L.L. Bean, they either go to Acadia or they go to a state park or a public land, a uh, piece of public land, and they recreate and they take their children and families. It's, where the, it's why you see all these people smiling around, walking around the state of Maine throughout the year, these, these tourists that come here. But I was asked about that job, the, the conservation job, and I received a letter from an outdoor writer, an environmental writer, and, they, and she said, you must experience this job, and you must paddle the Allegash, and you must paddle the St. John, and you must climb Katahdin, and you must uh, hike through Dabuli, and you must go down east and go into uh, the Gold Coast, and you must do that, and by God, I did every bit of it, and that was my job. So I got that job done. And, uh, and I hope you all have a chance to do some of these things. Because this state is, is a beautiful state. And it offers some of the best opportunities in the world for recreation. Whatever you like to do. I love to ski race. I like to hike. I love to fly, fly airplanes. I, I've been flying since I was uh, 16 years of age. Um, when I, was, when I was competing here at, at uh, Farmington, I would take uh, part of every year and I would go west and I would compete in, in a, uh, in a uh, uh, com competition called the National Para Ski Championship, which is parachute jumping and ski racing. We'd do parachute jumping one day and we'd ski race the next day. Yes, I am a candidate for governor that has been on the edge. And I can't hide from that. I've been flying airplanes all over the state. I've flown into, up, up into Canada. I've even crashed a couple of airplanes. Emergency landings, that's what we'll call them. But the fact is, is, is that I've lived a very complete life in this state. And I think that there's an opportunity for all of you to live a very complete life in this state and enjoy it and bring your children up here. But we need some jobs and we need a few changes.